We could do the, look, I, I know what you're thinking, and yes, I would. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy to you, Brit Hume. So Barack Obama gave his speech tonight at the DNC. He was delayed entering the arena when a confused Joe Biden asked him to pull his car around. <laughs> Folks are still talking about Biden's endless farewell speech last night. Insiders compared it to a funeral, except this time Hunter didn't try to bang a widow. <laughs> Apparently, the president will spend the rest of the convention in California, where he looks forward to taking a nap without waking up to Pelosi holding a pillow over his face. <laughs> but while in California, he'll also be looking for some land where he can finally retire. <laughs> As you know, the convention is being held at the United Center, where the Chicago Bulls play. You know, it must remind Tim Waltz of that time he won his sixth NBA title. <laughs> he lies. In his speech, Biden took credit for 500,000 EV charging stations, while the government only built eight. So he was 499,992 EV charging stations short. But hey, you know what? Math's not his strong suit. <laughs> You should see him try to count grandchildren. Oh, he's such a nice guy. Bill. Doug Emhoff was late for his speech tonight. Apparently, he was stuck in line at the abortion trailer with his two nannies. So mean here. Purdue has recalled 167,000 pounds of chicken nuggets, or as one customer calls them, lunch. He's a friend. Plastic surgeons say using Ozempic can age your skin like an old, overused rubber band. Ha! Ah, I did this all on my own, said one woman. Disney Plus has canceled Star Wars The Acolyte after its first season. The move will give Star Wars fans one more hour in their week to not have sex. Damn. <laughs> Send your letters to Kat. <laughs> and a Texas woman has broken the Guinness record, record for <laughs> world's widest tongue at 3.1 inches across. In related news, this man has just moved to Texas. <laughs> All right. He gets old, but the jokes never do. <laughs> so last night, the Democrats laid Joe Biden to rest. But first, they made him wait until midnight to say his goodbyes, pushing him a full eight hours past his bedtime. It was a performance best described as open casket. Maybe they did it on purpose. Maybe they didn't. The fact is, they wanted to put their best foot forward, and they preferred that it not come off in their hand. <laughs> How humiliating it must be to start a crowd chant of We Love Joe when the only thing the Dems love is that Joe's gone. <laughs> Poor Nancy. Imagine how she would have looked if her face could move. <laughs> when the Dems finally let Joe speak, it was nothing we haven't heard from him 50 times before. It was like watching a Halloween skeleton lip-syncing the phone book. <laughs> but that final insult of making Joe speak after everyone went to bed was no accident. Fact is, you're less likely to remember Kamala was a lousy VP if you forget Joe was ever here. They're still in charge. But it's all part of the media's massive brainwashing enterprise in support of Kamala. According to a new study by the Media Research Center, Harris has received 66% more airtime from the big three networks than Trump, and 84% of her coverage has been positive. Talk about lopsided. It reminds me of my right arm before marriage. <laughs> Did a lot of curls. But the real story behind this honeymoon is the machine, and not the one that Joe's been hooked up to at night to keep him alive. It's that group of elites that orders the media around like pool boys at my pool boy training center. 
And they're using Joe's campaign strategy. Only instead of hiding behind the boiler in the basement, she's hiding behind the media in plain sight. It's funny, just a few months ago, all these same outlets wanted her out. Look at these headlines. For the country's sake, Vice President Harris should step aside. The case for Biden to drop Kamala Harris. If Biden runs again, he should pick a new VP. And just a month ago, AOC claimed Democrats didn't want either one of those idiots. If you think that there is consensus among the people who want Joe Biden to leave, that Kamala, that they will support Kamala, Vice President Harris, you would be mistaken. A lot of them are not just interested in removing the president. They are interested in removing the whole ticket. That's her when she talks fast. <laughs> but my, how things change. Let's look at last night. In Kamala Harris, we have a chance to elect a president who is for the middle class because she is from the middle class. <laughs> she understands the urgency of rent checks and groceries and prescriptions. She is as committed to our reproductive and civil rights as she is to taking on corporate greed. I see a leader with a real commitment to a better future for working families. Well, somebody got her a speaking spell. <laughs> but hey, getting things wrong comes easy to AOC. Even as a bartender, she thought an apple teeny was a drink stirred with an iPhone. <laughs> so they're saying Cam is the future without any change in her behavior. That shows you the gears of the machine at work. Hell, one of her surrogates admits the media is doing the work for her. The more details you share, the more your policies are going to get picked apart. But she's saying, I trust the American people. I trust the journalists to explain these policies and our values to folks. And I think when that happens, it will be successful for Democrats. And why wouldn't they trust the journalists? They're on the same team. So how is Kamala any different from when they wanted her gone? Has she been magically transformed into a good candidate? No, the only thing that's changed is the mission. Suddenly the problem became the solution because Dems need a new narrative and she's it. A shiny bauble to distract you from the awful food prices, illegal immigration, migrant crime, and all the other problems this White House has caused. Just listen to the media, media adulation from last night. The people in this room had a great time last night. Exuberance, uh, joy. I have not seen so many Democrats laugh, smile, sing. This was a legitimate moment of catharsis and love. All of it's saying we can really do this. We're coming out of this darkness that Donald Trump has put us in. Donald Trump put you in darkness? He's not president, you jackass. <laughs> the They are. The darkness you've experienced comes from having your head fully up your ass. <laughs> if anything, Trump dragged you out into the sunshine so he could make fun of you. But imagine if this kind of coverage happened in sports. Seriously, you'll have to imagine it because I don't know anything about sports other than what a gym locker looks like from the inside. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. But can a losing team appear to be winning if it has a clear advantage in media praise? No, because you keep score. But with the Dems, the media doesn't keep score. No wonder Kamala said you can lose and be undefeated. You all have taken it upon yourselves to take on that responsibility of being role models and to inspire people. And by doing that, and all that that requires, which is the hard work, the practice, working as a team, knowing that you will be undefeated even if you don't win every game. <laughs> I think that speech just gave the whole team a traumatic brain injury. 
You know, the media is like a restaurant with just one dinner special and it's hot garbage. So their business plan demands that every day they create a variation on the same meal. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.